there is good news. As you are aware of the ongoing proceeding at the district court in Chicago, United States, where Atiku is pleading with the court to order Chicago State University to release Tinubu's academic records, Honorable Judge Gilbert just granted the order. Everything that Atiku is seeking must be delivered to him within two days. Let's quickly see what Atiku is seeking and then proceed to what the judge ordered. Atiku is seeking many documents. Let's start with number one. Chicago State University will produce certified true copies of the certificate template that the school issued in 1979. This means the sample of the certificate they issued that year. Of course, it must be uniform. No university will print different certificates for different departments or students. Number two, they will produce a copy of the certificate they issued Tinubu in 1979. Number three, they will produce a certificate that looks like the one Tinubu submitted to INEC but with another person's name. That's if they have this type of certificate. Remember that Tinubu's counsel argued that CSU made errors on the certificate they issued him. On the other hand, CSU's counsel disowned Tinubu's certificate in court that they do not know where he got it from. Number four, Atiku is also seeking CSU documents that were certified and produced by one James Orr, their general counsel at CSU, as well as communications relating to these documents. This one has many parts. We will take it one by one. Atiku wants an oral deposition from a staff member that CSU will appoint, preferably someone working in their registry department. He wants the person to answer some questions. Number one, the authenticity of the documents produced by CSU in response to the application and how and where CSU got the documents. Number two, Atiku wants to know CSU's position on the authenticity of other documents related to Tinubu purportedly produced by CSU in another Nigerian proceeding. This one is talking about the Nigerian lawyer Enaho Reba, who got all the documents from CSU last year. More on this in a moment. Number three, they will produce contents of Westberg affidavit. This is the person that deposed an affidavit that Tinubu graduated from CSU. Mind you, he didn't lie in this affidavit because they have a record of one Bola A Tinubu in their school. So they know what they're doing. You can't hold someone culpable for affirming what exists. But the situation changes when you demand for the particulars of the person, which surprisingly they've said that they don't have. They don't have records of how he paid for his tuition, his international passport, and other relevant information that a prospective student must provide to a school before being granted admission. Number four, they will explain the authenticity of the letter he wrote, including who requested for the letter, who prepared the letter, and to whom it was sent. Number five, they will explain CSU's position on the authenticity of the all documents and other facts regarding why the documents were certified, if he was authorized to do it, who requested the documents, and to whom they were sent. Looking at the scope of what Atiku is demanding, you will understand that there is fire on the mountain. No one will be willing to sacrifice his career or possible jail time for anyone for any amount whatsoever. The United States operates a credit economy. If you can't repay your loans, you lose your credit rating. Anyway, before we see what the judge ordered CSU to do, people should appreciate the American justice system. No matter your reservations, they are still miles better than ours. No system is perfect, but when judges make it obvious that they are rewriting the laws instead of interpreting the law the way the lawmakers pass them, which shows their intention when passing the law, but no, judges will prefer to shamelessly and blatantly turn them upside down. After all the paperwork that we normally do are done, the agents and everybody there, security, everybody will have the papers. INEC will scan or snap the, the resource sheet and transfer, transmit or transfer or whatever it is. That whether it is transmit or transfer is that thing that is captured with beavers. The results. Yes, look at Lawan. 
He was the Senate president when the Electoral Act 2022 was amended. He explained their intention about the beavers and IRF, everything. Not that it is not clear in the Electoral Act. It is written there in plain English. Even Einek accepted all this. They only said a glitch prevented them from uploading the results. Instead of the judges to hold them responsible for breaching the law, they said that upload of results wasn't necessary. So it means that the legislature and the executive branch, which in this case, INEC, the two of them are in agreement that results must be uploaded. But the judiciary said no, that it is not required. For the record, the amendments to the Electoral Act were sent to the National Assembly by the Buhari administration. They did the amendments, he appended his signature, and it became law. The appeal court judges refused to uphold this law. Back to the district court in Chicago, the moment Chicago State University asked the court to strike out Atiku's case, that they don't want to make an oral deposition, instead that they want to make a written statement. They said all this, and in order to cover their bias, they added that they are not opposed to the release of Tinubu's records. It doesn't make sense that a school will go the extra mile to prevent the release of the academic records of a former student. If they have to put all this effort, that means they have something to hide. When they made this argument at the beginning of hearing, it must have sealed their fate because the judge can see through the whole abracadabra because anyone that is actively preventing evidence, the person knows that that evidence will be injurious to his case. So it's very commendable that the judge saw through all the efforts to prevent the release of Tinubu's records. Compare that to what Nigerian judges did to INEC, they started making excuses for them. The moment the judges saw that INEC were refusing subpoena, even the ones they complied with, they didn't tender all the documents required of them. Where things work, judgment is very predictable, especially when there is abundance of evidence of wrongdoing. Remember, all prosecutors conduct mini-trials in order to determine how their case will do in court. The only thing that can make the case fail is maybe how they obtained evidence. That's why they make sure that they obtain proper legal warrants before conducting searches and obtaining evidence. They must convince the judge before the warrant is issued. This is to make sure that there is no abuse of power. Not here that police can arrest someone and refuse to charge the person to court and still refuse to release the person despite a court order ordering his release. They conduct searches of people's phones, wallets, and cars without warrants. This is completely legal. No court will grant a broad-based, non-specific search warrant to the police. A warrant must be targeted at an individual, not the entire population. Anyway, what is happening between CSU and Tinubu looks like a cat and mouse game. This one will say that they made errors on his certificate, the other one will not admit the errors or even say yes or no to the ownership of the document but still tell us that the person graduated from the university. Meanwhile, Tinubu never argued at the presidential election petition tribunal that CSU made errors on his certificate. If he did that, it will mean an acceptance that he forged the certificate. Well, it looks like what happened was that after he successfully took up the real person's identity, the school couldn't issue him a certificate. This was to give themselves room to maneuver out of the situation in case it blows in their faces. The school will be held accountable if it's discovered that they issued a certificate to someone who wasn't admitted to the school in the first place. If it's an honorary certificate, it's a different thing. But once they can't show evidence that the person actually got admitted to the school, it becomes a fraud. Mind you, they are still correct in saying that he graduated from the school because he bears exactly the same name as the person who got admitted. So technically, they can't be held culpable. But a problem arises when admission records show a different person. This is exactly why CSU said they don't have any other information on Tinubu. If you remember, Tinubu claimed that the military invaded his house in the 90s and as a result, he lost his certificates and other documents. All of a sudden, in 2022, he got a photocopy of a supposed lost certificate which the CSU have now disowned in court. Well, the exact replica of the certificate he submitted to INEC is available online on Pinterest. Uh -huh. 
Now, let's see how the district court in Chicago arrived at the decision in favor of Atiku Abubaka. The court held that Atiku made the three grounds for granting his application. Number one, the person or entity he wants to discover the information from resides in the district of the court, that's Chicago State University. Number two, the information Atiku is seeking must be used in a proceeding before a foreign tribunal, in this case the Presidential Election Tribunal in Nigeria or the Supreme Court. Number three, the application must be submitted by a foreign or international tribunal or an interested person. In this case, Atiku is an interested person being a candidate in the presidential election and currently one of the petitioners challenging the election in court. You can see why the appeal court gave Atiku's legal team the copy of the judgment on time. They brought this document before the judge in Chicago to convince him that Atiku can no longer tender Tinubu's records in court since they've delivered judgment. This would have breached one ground to release the documents to Atiku, but Atiku countered that he will use it on appeal to the Supreme Court and that the U.S. court shouldn't consider admissibility before ordering the release of the documents. The court agreed with him anyway. It shouldn't be the business of the court in U.S. to consider whether the records they want to order their release will be admissible in a Nigerian court as a precondition before making the order. This singular act by the appeal court in Nigeria lends credence to the rumor that the judgment day was shifted in order to beat Atiku in Chicago. If you remember, after the delivered judgment, Atiku's lawyer pleaded for the petitioners to be given the copies of the judgment same day because their 14-day period to appeal at the Supreme Court already started counting. But the presiding judge refused, saying that it was already late in the day. He promised the next day, eventually they were given the copies of the judgment two days after. The appeal court judges didn't even try in any way to hide their bias. They were blatant about their partiality. So imagine facing such judges. Even if you bring a video of a public official committing a heinous crime, they will tell you that it wasn't intentional. That's what they said about Shetima's double nomination, that he intentionally did not make himself available to be nominated twice. <laughs> Even the respondents did not make this kind of vague argument in court. The judges made it on their behalf. Next, on how the U.S. court reached their decision, they agreed with Atiku that he already presented the evidence that Enaho Reba got from Chicago State University to the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. The fact that they didn't consider the evidence still doesn't stop him from using it at the Supreme Court. Tinubu's counsel was arguing that according to the judgment of the appeal court that Atiku didn't front load the evidence, that it was a later addition, the judge saw through all the effort to stop the release of Tinubu's admission records at Chicago State University. If Tinubu honestly went through this university as he claims, why is he making it difficult for Atiku to find out by himself? They wanted to convince the judge that the Supreme Court will not admit the evidence from Atiku. How did they know? Are they Supreme Court judges? Did the Supreme Court judges make this information available to them? Anyway, Honorable Judge Gilbert didn't agree with them because obviously there's no way they could have known or deciphered whether the Supreme Court will admit the evidence or not. Now, to what the court ordered CSU to do, part of the conditions for the release of these records to Atiku is to consider whether his interest outweighs Tinubu's privacy. The fact that he has the right to keep his school records confidential is important also. But Honorable Judge Gilbert held that Atiku's interest far outweighs Tinubu's privacy claims because he made his certificate an issue when he submitted it to INEC while filing his particulars for the presidential election. The court agreed with CSU on Atiku's request number four that it will be burdensome searching through their database to get the information, especially when the time is too short, only two days. So Atiku won't be getting that information, but the court disagreed with CSU and ordered them to make oral deposition under oath. The court said that CSU failed to establish a good cause for the court to require Atiku to proceed with a deposition by written questions. That oral deposition is the most effective method to obtain information from a deponent under the circumstances of the case. 
Chicago State University had earlier argued that under federal rules of civil procedure that they were entitled to answer Atiku's request with written responses. This is where it gets tough. Like already said, they all understand what it means to lie under oath. So despite the fact that Atiku amended his subpoena by reducing his request, he can still get all the information that he needs through an oral deposition. What he just needs to prove is that Tinubu forged his certificate. It's public knowledge that he wasn't the person that was admitted to CSU, but that wouldn't disqualify him going by the Nigerian constitution. What would disqualify him is certificate forgery. In summary, Atiku's request was granted by the court. Chicago State University will produce all relevant and non-privileged documents to Atiku within two days. Part of what the oral deposition will do is to answer questions about James Orr, who certified all the documents from Chicago State University that Tinubu's counsel tendered at the presidential election petition tribunal. So you can understand where Atiku is going, why he wants them to make oral deposition about this guy. So if this guy didn't really do the certification, it will mean that Tinubu's counsel presented false evidence and deceived the court. Whether they deceived them or not is irrelevant now, but it will show that their judgment was flawed, which will form part of the grounds for appeal at the Supreme Court. That's if the Supreme Court will consider them in the first place. The Nigerian judiciary should try and learn from the Americans. No matter your reservations about them, you must admire the independence of the three branches of government. Everyone asserts his authority without undue influence, which is exactly the opposite in Nigeria. The actions of the courts lately can be summarized in two ways. One, they will delay or speed up the timely delivery of judgment once it's not going to be favorable to the executive branch. Like they did before the inauguration, even the Nigerian lawyer, Mike Enahoreba, who received the documents from CSU last year, they refused to assign his case to any court for hearing up to today. This is despite the fact that he filed this case in December last year before the election. And going by what the appeal court judges said, that all issues relating to qualification of a candidate are pre-election matters. If that's true, why didn't the court hear this pre-election matter? Number two, they are ready to go the extra mile to defend someone if it means rewriting the laws or in some cases maliciously omitting subsections of the constitution in order to achieve and justify their actions. In one of the videos we made after the judgment, we highlighted the intentional omission of a subsection by the judges in order to achieve their conclusion. We look forward to the legal fireworks at the Supreme Court. Thanks for watching.